So this is a topic that I've been studying out, keys for creating wealth, because definitely this is the season where we are supposed to have the wealth transfer and enter into all the wealth, yet many Christians are not walking in wealth. And so I've studied out Jewish wisdom, ancient Jewish wisdom regarding this principle. And uh, there's actually 10 steps. This will be a course on our platform, but the first step is free, tonight's step. And maybe I just should just run through the other steps that you know what is waiting. So the first step is helping God's children. The second step is you have to work. The third step is you have to solve problems. Number four is God is going to use people to bless you. You have to network, number five. Number six, make sure there's nothing holding you back. Number seven, you have to prepare your soil with a seed. Number eight, you need to be expectant. You need to be expectant. Number nine is the blessing and the curse. Which one are you operating on under? And the, number 10 is step into your blessings. So tonight we are doing the first step, which is helping God's children. And uh, this is something that all Jews know. They get it from studying the Torah, the first five books in the Bible. But Christians seem not to do this. And why am I studying Jews, Prophet Petrus? Well, you can look at any country in the world. It's the Jews that control the wealth. You, it, you'd be very hard-pressed to find a poor Jew. Normally, Jews are very wealthy. Even if the country is doing bad, even when the country is doing bad, Jews control most of the wealth around the world. And it's not that they are God's chosen, frozen, or that they have a special blessing, or they are more blessed than us. No, it's because they operate in principles that are found in the Bible that Christians seem not to apply. So I've studied it out. What are these principles and how do we apply them? And uh, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. I definitely learned something new. And then I went and I compared what do Jews do that are successful, that follow biblical principles compared to wealthy people in the world. And they actually do the same thing. Even people that are not saved, they don't know that they're applying the same rules, but they are applying the same rules. So what does that mean? Well, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a, not a Christian or whether you're saved or not saved, if you follow the rules, you're going to get rich. There's many Jews that haven't accepted Jesus Christ as the Savior. And so in other words, they're going to hell, but they are very wealthy because they're applying the principles that their parents taught them. And so Christians are being left behind. And there's even worldly people that are not saved, that are not Jewish, that are applying the same principles. And so it's eight principles or eight keys to wealth. And, and I'm going to share one today for free. The first key is God wants us to help other people. God wants us to help other people. So let's unpack that. Let's begin. We're going to look at four scriptures. Matthew 7, 12 says, So in everything, do to others what you would want to have them to do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Do to others what you want to have done to yourself. And Luke 6, 31, do to others as you would want them to have to do to you. So why two scriptures? Because the Bible says out of two or three witnesses, everything must be established. And... When we follow what God instructs us to do, we know the blessing follows. But let, let's continue. Romans 13, 8 to 10. It's quite long, but let's read it. It's important. Let no debt remain outstanding. So we're actually talking about money as well. Except continual debt, debt of loving one another. For whoever loves another fulfills the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whenever the other commandments there may be are summed up in the one command, the one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Love is therefore the fulfillment of the law. And then we look at Mark 12, 31. 
The second is this, there's two commands that Jesus said we must keep. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no command greater than these. But let's recap and say, Matthew 7, 12 is the scripture, the foundational scripture for why we need to help other people. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Okay, and we all know that, but from a Christian perspective, not the Jewish perspective or the Jewish element. So pay attention, I'm going to give you a key that unlocks this door that you understand why that scripture is important. Why that scripture is important. Okay, enter Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Rabbi Daniel Lappin is a Messianic Jew. That means he's saved. He's, he's born again, but he's also a rabbi. So he's a learned Jewish scholar. And when he was young, at around age 12, 13, he said to his dad, I want pocket money because I want to buy my own car when I graduate school. And his father said to him, that's great. You get pocket money by having a job, by having a job. And so he started working in a job. He saved absolutely every single cent that he earned. And by the time that he graduated, he bought his first car. And like all first cars, it was a piece of junk because he didn't have a lot of money. And he said to his car, his dad, my car's not running well. It's giving me lots of problems. And his dad said, okay, go to this man. He is my friend and tell him about your problem. So he went to see the man. The man obviously was a mechanic working on cars and he had his own mechanic workshop, fixing cars and things. And, they, and he was revving the engine and listening to all the things and he said to him, wow, this car really is a terrible car. It needs a lot of work, but let me see what I can do. And he made Rabbi Daniel Lappin sit there the whole day while he was working at the car in the back. And when it was evening, he brought the car out again and he said to Rabbi Daniel Lappin, try it now. And as he started the car, the engine was running smooth, like a brand new car. And so Rabbi Daniel Lappin said to the man, what do I owe you? And the man said, no, you don't owe me anything. You can go. And as he was driving out of the man's garage, he thought to himself, maybe this man thought, I'm bringing my father's car. If he understood that it was my car, not my father's car, he would charge me. So he parked again and got outside and went back to the man and said to him, this is not my father's car. It's my car. Surely I must owe you something. And so the man said to him, sit down. Let me explain something to you. And the man proceeded to tell him that Rabbi Daniel Lappin's father did something for this man that he could never repay. He did something for this man that he could never repay. And this man was always indebted to, to Rabbi Daniel Lappin's father. And so he explained to Daniel, he said, as I cannot repay your father, I know that you are his son. And by blessing you, I'm blessing your father more than what I could have done if I did something directly for your father. Because I can never repay the debt to your father. But one day you will have children and you will understand how tremendously powerful it is when somebody blesses your children. They may not necessarily be able to bless you, but when they bless your children, you'll understand the worth of that. So that's the key. Because that man owed Daniel's father a debt that he couldn't repay. But it's the same with us. Jesus gave every, everything on the cross. God gave his only son. And we can never repay the debt to God. We can never repay that debt. But what you do for God's children blesses God in a way that you can never pay your debt if you try to do it directly for God. Does that make sense? Now the light bulbs come on. So in this life, the key is to do for others as if they are God's children, knowing that you are blessing God for the debt that you can never repay. And in return, God will bless you. You see, this is Jewish wisdom. All Jews teach their children this principle and they operate on it. And if you look at Jews and the Jewish community and you are inside the community, you will see Jewish people do things for other Jews all the time 
asking no money, asking no money, doing great things that would normally cost or incur a big debt to you. But they know that by blessing God's children, each other, they are actually indirectly blessing God and partaking in this blessing. So, how does this relate to us? This is a spiritual principle. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. If you study out all these things, it means wealth. Wealth, material wealth, blessing, increase, finances. But how do you seek God's kingdom? Well, you need to find people on the earth, whether they are Christian or not, and you need to bless them like that man blessed Daniel Lappin by fixing his car, because Daniel Lappin's father was very pleased. Now, people on earth are God's children, and when you help them, and you apply this principle, you help them not out of obligation, but you help them because it's a delight unto the Lord. You are seeking God's kingdom. And the way to do that, if you study it out, seeking God's kingdom is fulfilling the Great Commission. The Great Commission. Let's look at that. Matthew 28, 16, 20. The Great Commission. You see that this is Matthew 6. This is Matthew 28. So this is a continuation. It's a continuation. It explains how to, how to seek the kingdom first. Now, you can study it out on your own time in the original Greek. All these things include material wealth, blessing, prosperity, and increase, because that, that's what Jesus paid for. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, some had doubt, and Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you to the end of the age. Okay. So we can paraphrase and say, therefore, go and equip people. Therefore, go and equip people to teach them, to equip them, make disciples. Now, what is it when you make a disciple? When you make a disciple, you journey with someone. You don't just do the altar call and now they're saved and you put them in a local church and pass them off to a cell group. No. When you make disciples, you walk a journey with someone. You walk a journey with someone. Why? Because they might not understand or they might go off the path or they might get demotivated or they might go wonky or the devil might attack them and then they go backwards. So when you make a disciple, you are walking a journey with somebody to understand and know that they grow, that they become mature so they can stand. That's actually a big responsibility. A lot of people do, does not understand what it means to make a disciple today. You have to walk a journey with someone and hold their hand and check up on them and make sure that they are growing. You must make sure they are overcoming, that they're learning, that they are connected, that they, that they have family and that they belong. And teaching them is equipping them. Teaching them is equipping them. Why is that important? The Bible says my people lack for, uh, perish for lack of knowledge. Now there's a lot of biblical knowledge that people don't know because they maybe didn't grow up a Christ, as a Christian or they, they weren't in a good church. And then they don't know how to deal with their issues in their life. The issues in their life. So when you make disciples of people and when you teach them, equip them, you are fulfilling the Great Commission. And then it means all these things will be given to you. What is that? Prosperity, wealth, provision, house, car, everything that we need to live, but in abundance. Why? Because we're taking care of God's children. The same way that that man helped Rabbi Daniel Lappin with his car and Daniel Lappin's father was blessed. The same way when we help Christians or people on the earth to, to walk a journey to make a disciple out of them and to equip and teach them, we are doing for God's children and then God blesses us. God blesses us. So you might say, well, Prophet Petrus, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make a disciple. I don't know how to equip someone. 
you've come to the right place. We've built an equipping platform, an equipping platform, costly.ca.za. And we encourage you to send people that they can get equipped on our platform. It's an easy way for you not to worry about equipping. On our platform, we've got a fasting workshop and we've got a prophetic workshop, which are intricate parts of how to overcome in the end times. How to overcome in the end times. I'm going to give you the puzzles on the box at the outside that you can see the picture, that you have a little bit more about what's inside the box. With the prophetic workshop, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and they will prophesy. So there are many people in the world that don't know how to do that. They don't have a good foundation in the prophetic. They don't have a practical, easy step. How must they prophesy? They don't know the biblical elements because we have to obey the word of God. They don't know the function of prophecy. They don't know how to test prophecy. And so in the prophetic workshop, I share with you the way God trained me, how everything is practical and easy for everyone to understand. It really is very simple. In the fasting workshop, we teach how to return to God with tears and fasting. Why is that important? Well, in Amos, which is a prophet for the end times prophesying provision, there's a scripture that says, the reaper will overtake the sower. It means you will be blessed before you even sow. The man, your blessings will overtake you. In Joel, it says, God will restore what the locust has eaten. And both prophets, not knowing each other, mention the mountains will run with new wine. Why? So that we know that they are linked. It's prophets that are prophesying blessing for us in the end times. But unfortunately, there's a condition that many people don't know about. It says in Joel that if we want to enter the latter reign, the wealth transfer, the blessing, the protection, the provision, we have to return to God with tears and fasting. Most of the people today follow what they call the Daniel fast, 21 days eating vegetables and fruit. But Daniel was actually a vegan. That was his lifestyle. So that's not a fast. And so the devil has tried to hide this revelation because Christians need to return to God with tears and fasting with a biblical pattern so that they can enter into those blessings. And Satan is trying to stop us. There's also rules and regulations that we must obey while we fast. And God says, if we don't do that, he will overlook us. He will over overlook our fast. But if we do obey, these are some of the blessings that you have, that you can look forward to. God will turn your day into night. You will be like a well-watered garden in the desert. God will restore your joy. God will also restore the joy of your salvation. He will break every chain. He will break every yoke. He will call when you cry out, and he will hear your prayers and answer. And God's glory will go before you. It also mentions you will have every blessing that Abraham had. Abraham was one of the most blessed people in the Bible. And on top of that, you have all the blessings that are mentioned in Amos and in Joel. But unfortunately, the way to enter into that is through tears and fasting. So why are we keeping repeating this over and over? Why are we? Because we need to sound the trumpet. We are now entering in a time where it's going to be very turbulent. And the Bible even calls it the tribulation period. We are going to be raptured. The, the people who study end time prophecy and the tribulation period say we are going to be raptured in the middle of the tribulation period, which means we have to endure three and a half years. Now, I don't know about you, but the world seems very unstable right now with COVID and conspiracies and what government is trying to do. Many people have lost their jobs. And if you think this is as bad as it's going to get, it is going to get worse. But if you apply the fasting workshop and you apply the prophetic workshop, you have the tools in your hand to dig yourself out of the pit and to overcome. You see, wounded people don't make good soldiers. You have to be whole. And many of us up until now was walking around on crutches. And the only way for you to overcome is to be whole, is to be whole and victorious with the right equipping that you have the right tools for the job. So if you want to start making wealth, why don't you ask God to lead you to people that you can start discipling so that they can grow? And why don't you walk a journey with them as you hold their hand to come on the on, on costly to finish the fasting workshop 
and the prophetic workshop that they are equipped, that they have the tools to understand, to, uh, to overcome and stand the flood that is about to come. We've already done the work, the prophetic workshop and the fasting workshop. Each of them was carefully researched. Ten years went into each, carefully researching the Bible and the scriptures, making sure that it's, it's good sound doctrine that we're teaching and we're revealing it. You know, some of the revelation in the fasting workshop and in the prophetic workshop has not been released until now. You'll see that other preachers around the world are not saying the same thing. Yet everything that is in the workshops, is everything is proved by two or three scriptures in the word of God. It's biblical. So come and find out and come and make disciples and bless God's people by equipping them that they can not only stand the flood that is about to hit the earth, but they also overcome and that they become rich and prosperous. That is God's design for us. Okay, be blessed and thank you for watching.